and welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. We are local talk radio, 660 on your AM dial and online at KFAR660.com. And streaming live around the world. I do understand we have some folks that are listening in other places in Alaska by way of our Internet connection. So welcome to the show. And I am Steve Floyd, the man behind the machine here, so to speak, or the monkey behind the machine, as it were. I'm the one that runs the board and makes sure that everybody gets a chance to speak their mind. Joining me in the studio from Bighorn Enterprises, one of the sponsors of the show, we have Joshua Bennett. Also, Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical, the other paying sponsor of the store. And we have Dave Diesel from the American Campaign for Liberty here, Fairbanks Chapter. Uh, good morning, gentlemen, and welcome to Patriots Lament. Hello. Hey. Hola. Uh, hola. All right, what are, you, are we uh, phoning it in from Mexico this morning, Aaron? I'm just getting ready for the invasion. Uh, all right. Uh, now, gentlemen, uh, one of the things we had talked about this morning or possibly <coughs> talking about on the show... I love how we're talking about talking about stuff. Anyway, uh, since we do have a limited amount of time, one of the issues that seems to have come up quite a bit recently is the issue of trial by jury in terms of not only the rights and responsibilities of it, but what does it mean in terms of what the role of a jury is? Is a jury simply there to judge the facts in a case like some kind of a supercomputer and spit out a verdict of yes, he did it or no, he didn't do it? Uh, and, And if... So, at what point do extenuating circumstances come in, and, and why would there be any such thing if the simple role of a jury, obviously, I'm, I'm betraying my point of view on this, <laughs> if the role of a jury is simply to adjudicate facts, then would there ever be extenuating circumstances? I'll shut my mouth and let you open it, gentlemen. Uh, I think we're going we're gonna to just read a quick little excerpt of Spooner's essay on trial by jury. Wait, who's Spooner? What do you mean? The freak. All right, now, now there, seriously, who is Spooner? Um, Lysander Spooner was a, a individualist author, kind of intellectual, during the 19th century. What he wrote during the 1800s? Yeah. So he must not have known anything. Yeah, people could, people could actually read back then too. So he had a kind of large audience compared to people who just write books today. But um, anyway, he he wrote about the jury and nullification as a tool uh, to combat slavery. He was one of the most um, vocal abolitionist of his time and uh so he he realized that the jury would be the only real check on the government he had these kind of false checks and balances of the three government branches checking each other but since they're all part of the same machine he didn't believe that that would actually be effective so he he figured the jury through nullification was going to be the only way to um actually restrain the government and what does nullification mean just for those who are new to the discussion uh that's the idea that if a law is unjust um, the jury does not have to find someone guilty of that law. So at the time, there were there were all the, the laws on slavery, and uh, the Supreme Court had ruled that slaves, if they escaped to the north, um, they were still bound to be returned to their slave owners in the south. They, they weren't free. They couldn't buy their way to freedom either. That was what the Dred Scott case was all about. And so Spooner said... Uh, If you're an abolitionist and you're in the jury box and you think slavery is morally wrong, uh, nullify. Say the guy is innocent because the law is wrong. There you go. All right. So what now? Now we return to Lysander Spooner and what did he say, Josh? Well, his uh, essays act huge, but we're just going to read a little bit of it. For more than 600 years, that is since Magna Carta. And if you don't know what Magna Carta is, we're going to leave it to the listeners to look that up. In 1215, and this was written over 150 years ago, by the way, so we'd say 750 years, there's been no clearer principle of English or American constitutional law than that in criminal cases, it's not only the right and duty of juries to judge what are the facts, what is the law, and what was the moral intent of the accused, but that it is also their right and their primary and paramount duty to judge of the justice of the law to hold all laws invalid that are, in their opinion, unjust or oppressive, and all persons guiltless in violating or resisting the execution of such laws. Unless this is the right and the duty of the jurors, it is plain that, instead of juries being a palladium of liberty, a barrier, a barrier against the tyranny and oppression of the government, they are really mere tools in its hands for carrying into ex- execution any injustice and oppression it may desire to have executed. 
But for their right to judge the law and the justice of the law, juries would be no protection to the accused person, even as a matter of fact. For if the government can dictate to the jury any law whatever in a criminal case, it can certainly dictate to them the laws of evidence. That is, it can dictate what evidence is admissible, what is inadmissible, and also what force or weight is to be given to the evidence admitted. And if the government can thus dictate to the jury the laws of the evidence, it can not only make it necessary for them to convict on a partial exhibition of the evidence rightfully pertaining to the case, but it can even require them to convict on any evidence, whatever that it pleases to offer them. The rights and the duty of the juror must necessarily be such as are here claimed for them, will be evident when it's considered what the trial by jury is and what is its object. The trial by jury, then, is a trial by the country, that is, by the people, as distinguished from trial by the government. It was anciently called trial per pas, which is trial of the country, and now in the very criminal trial, and now in every criminal trial, the jury are told that the accused has for the trial put himself upon the country, which country you, the jury, are. The object of this trial by the country or by the people, in preference to a trial by the government, is to guard every against every species of oppression by the government. In order to effect this end, it is indispensable that the people, or the country, judge of and determine their own liberties against the government. Instead of the government's judging of and determining its own powers over the people, how is it possible that juries can do anything to protect the liberties of the people against the government if they are not allowed to determine what those liberties are to be? So if somebody tells you that a jurist does not have a right to judge the law, whether it is a judge giving instructions to a jury or whether it is a candidate for public office who is establishing in his own mind and for the sake of the public what he believes the jury to be, what would you say to such a person? Is that person misinformed? Is that person deceiving? Is that person being dishonest? Or is that person honestly just wrong? I mean, how do you... How do you I would be suspicious of their motivations, right? Somebody who doesn't believe that the jury, which is the people, have the right to deem a law unjust, I would suspect that that's a person who is planning on foisting laws upon people that they would want to nullify in the jury box. Exactly. We have the option that we are told when people say that we don't have the jury doesn't have the right to judge the law their option is well if you don't like the law get it changed in the ballot box but we know that in the ballot box if 51 percent of the people want to oppress 49 percent the 49 are oppressed so how is that making change the whole object of it is those 49 percent can be in a jury box and say this is wrong this is um, oppressive to the people and we don't want it and out it goes basically it's the I always call it the fourth branch of government which it's not really a branch of the government but it's the most important branch that the people have to keep oppression at bay yeah even um, kind of extending on that uh, for the people who believe that well if you don't like the law just change it at the next vote well then you're subject to whatever law for for whatever the term in office is, right? And w and if you if the person who's elected believes that the public should determine what right and wrong is via the ballot box, why don't they think the public should be allowed to determine what's right and wrong in the jury box? It makes no sense. It's a total non sequitur. If they believe in the political process, which is supposedly guided by the people, you know, for all the fans of democracy out there, why don't they trust the people in a jury box? Dave, I'm going to have to ask you to stop using big words like non sequitur. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, I mean, for people who don't know what that means, that's a that's a term from logic, which means right. literally doesn't does not follow. Yeah, it's from Latin, yep. non sequitur, does not follow, and that we, we're seeing an awful lot of that lately in terms of the public discourse with people simply not capable lately of simple logic, and I don't understand how that is. Well, it's people who come back and look at everything as the rule of law and see um, the people not being able to be above the law. I think that's the main drawback. Well, the rule of law today is uh, the term that we use it in is not what the term is meant to be. The rule of law in our 
constitutional government is not the rule of law of every statute and ordinance that a body of people pass against the uh, the citizens. The rule of law is supposed to be the document that is um, supposed to hold them in the check and balance. That is the the law, and that's what the rule is supposed to be, not ordinances, statutes, whatever, whatnot, what have you. When you, I've been reading a little bit about the. Uh, uh, reading. Reading. The, no, there's, that's your problem. Too. Origins of the revolution. And uh, what got these people to the point where they finally said enough? And we're taught all through our, well, wasn't mine, but if you went through the public education system, you're taught through the whole thing that it was a T tax. Taxes were too high. Taxation without representation. Those were part of it. But the part that they never, ever talk about was the fact that the British crown took citizens from the colonies across the ocean and back to England to prosecute them in crimes. That, if you actually read what the founders, what the people that were fighting at the time, one of their main things was, no, we have a right to trial by jury of our peers. How dare you cast us across the sea? This goes back to our Magna Carta. This is against the uh, British Constitution at the time. They were carrying the citizens that lived in the colonies who had the right under Magna Carta, I mean, it was expressed in Magna Carta, to have a trial of jury by their peers. Their peers were the people that were in their own condition at their time, their neighbors, and they were cast them across in a parliament or whatever the king's uh, jury was prosecuting them. That so, is a major, cons- a major factor in the Revolutionary War. I, I can't major see. Factor. I can't see at all why that would be an important thing. I mean, that would be like taking somebody from Fairbanks down to Anchorage for a trial. Or taking, well, in a, to make it a little more, what it would be to take someone from Fairbanks and haul them to Washington D.C. Yeah. and either Congress or the President, saying, "Well, you're going to be, we're going to try you, and here are our jurors." Our legislators, and they're going to prosecute you. And, uh, and for, for whatever persons think about Senator Ted Stevens, the late senator, that is exactly what happened with him, yep. is that he they held his trial in Washington, D.C. instead of holding his trial in Alaska. Now, and, and there are other people here in Fairbanks who are being taken down to Anchorage for trial uh, mm-hmm. for crimes that are allegedly were committed here in Fairbanks. I, I mean, I, I see some modern-day... Uh, comparisons with what happened back then as to what is happening now. Do you think that has anything to do with the rise of the Tea Party movement now in the United States? I don't People getting think fed so. up? No? Well, I mean, maybe fed up, but uh, nothing to do with uh, jury. I mean, I haven't heard what maybe Ron Paul actually talked about, it, uh, the rights of the juror. I haven't heard anyone. No one does. No one understands it. I mean, very, very few people. Frank Turney calls in here. That guy gets it. 